Countless multifamily structures throughout the country are successfully completed every year, and thousands are under construction at any given time. While fires do occur during construction, they are very rare. According to the NFPA, a total of 550 non-confined structure fires occurred in apartments under construction from 2007 to 2011. This only represents 1.4% of all apartments constructed during this time period. And out of all the structural fires in apartments and residential homes occupied and under construction, only 0.9% of those fires occurred during construction. It's in everyone's best interest that these buildings are designed to be affordable, built safely, and delivered on time. Construction Fire Safety Practices is a valuable training program that uses video, PowerPoints, and three manuals to help the construction industry and fire departments prevent and minimize fires during construction. Fire prevention is everyone's business. In order to manage risks and hazards and reduce catastrophic fire events during construction, there needs to be a plan and management model in place. In order to have an effective program, there must also be a system of accountability. Generally, it starts, I think, with the general contractors, the subcontractors involved in the phases of construction for a building because oftentimes it's what they do or what they don't do that causes those fires. I think safety is just part of what we do. Uh, we were required to provide certain parts and pieces on the job site and quality is part of the, the process that we provide as well as our safety program is just part of what we do and who we are. I look at this development as being a collective effort from the fire service, from building officials, and from the construction industry. So we all know what we need to do to protect buildings and those working around buildings from the start of a construction project to its very end when it's approved and people move in. The team that must work together closely to assure that a building is constructed safely and fire-free is made up of both public and private sectors. The building contractor is required to produce a safe working environment. The local building department provides enforcement and oversight of the building construction process in accordance with state and local statutes. The local fire department has two functions. The first is fire prevention and the second is fire suppression. Well, I believe the building and fire are on the same page. We're concerned with public safety. As the project is being developed, all those policies that we have in the California Fire Code or NFPA or any other excellent or best practices are put, put into play. Usually early on, uh, on each project, we try to go meet with the fire marshal and the fire department that's closest to the job site. We talk about the type of project that we're building, uh, what any kind of particulars we have, especially with a wood frame job, what kind of fire protection uh, procedures and processes we're going to put in place. Many of the regulations, many of the requirements are in the fire code, but the building inspector doesn't know them, and they're not aware of them, and they're not looking for them. They're counting how many nails in the sheetrock. Did it, does it meet the, the nailing specs? Building officials, their scope is compliance, code compliance, and so they don't think in terms of what may cause a fire. So with that, it's important that they have that open dialogue with their fire marshals, work together to have that commonality of understanding, and then therefore have that greater implementation of the code to save lives, to prevent fires. According to OSHA, the Occupational Safety and Health Administration, a building site must have a fire protection program incorporated into its health and safety plan. It shouldn't be a surprise to any inspector. Sites can be dangerous and unsafe environments. It needs to be recognized that fire protection is every worker's responsibility, and any fire hazards should be reported immediately to a supervisor. Like most everything else, if you educate the, the construction company and the, and the workers, that they need to be aware of the problems that, they, that could occur. We know what starts the fires in many cases. I don't think that they, they're taught on the front end to safeguard against that. Workers come on the job site, uh, they're required to go through a safety orientation with the first day of work that describes basically the general, general work construction, work safety program, safety procedures, as well as our uh, emergency egress program, emergency uh, crisis management plan, that sort of thing. It would take better communication, better training to make sure that it's not just the, the contractor, but also everybody that works for them 
has that same understanding with respect to what are the hazards and how can we mitigate these hazards. Our first line of defense was watching out for safety is our field staff. Our field staff is out on site 24 hours a day monitoring the job site, walking through. I'm a fresh pair of eyes, seeing things that these guys see every day, but I might catch something different. If I do see something, bring it up to them, address it immediately. We have 160, 170 guys on site, and our job is to make sure that they get home safely every day. Corporate risk management policies and procedures have continually improved over time, but there are still opportunities for a fire to spread beyond control. The establishment and maintenance of safe conditions of work are no doubt the responsibility of management, but it is required that each employee follow prescribed safe methods of work. We have several things that we do on a job related to fire protection. Uh, one of them is no smoking and we post signage across the job. So that is one of the few things that will get them removed from the job permanently if they're caught smoking on the job. Fire prevention is a huge part of construction. Depending on the task, certain preventions that need to be put in place. Hot work in a, a building under construction is probably the, the main source of ignition uh, because it happens frequently. It happens in multiple areas throughout the building, many times around combustible construction or debris and trash that hasn't been picked up. Globules of metal can bounce many feet and you don't know where they are. And the welder or even the welder's watchman uh, doesn't see that. And I want to have a, the contractors have a plan in place on how to deal with that, how to mitigate any small fires they may have, making sure they have the extinguishing equipment available. At the beginning of any day, a subcontractor that is performing hot work, for example welding, uh, they check in with our site foreman's office. We've got this hot work permit that's a three copy form. They fill it out, they take these top two pages, they leave them with us. They take the yellow card with them and they hang it in the area that they're doing the hot work. For us to kind of know big picture where we've got any hot work going on in the building and it also helps after hours for our security guards so they know exactly the area that it was happening at and just make sure that there's nothing suspicious going on. There is fire watch as well. They basically have fire extinguisher located there with them. That secondary eyes of a, a welding inspector is also observing the process. So there's lots of eyes obviously during any hot work process. Beyond hot work and smoking as fire hazards, other important elements to be considered in a fire safety plan include on-site food preparation, control of any fire of waste material, proper regulation of temporary heating equipment, and properly operated and maintained plant equipment and vehicles. Housekeeping is, even at my own house, one of the most mundane chores, but in the long run, it's something that just has to be done. The biggest thing that matters with the, with the fire is the cleanliness of the job. We need to keep it clean from anything that could possibly happen and create a fire. One of the biggest ways for something on a building like this to catch fire is all of the drilling that the MEP trades do through the studs, uh, creates the kindling on the floor. The accumulation of debris with the end cuts from the two buys, along with the sawdust and, and wood chips and scrap. People just don't look at these materials as a problem, but it creates a huge fire load. And then we, in many cases, add to that with of flammable paints or thinners that we're bringing into the project for the finishing process. Housekeeping is something that's a, a daily task. Uh, end of every day, they're required to clean up for their site-specific work. On top of that, once a week, ours are on Friday, we will have it, what's called a composite crew that subcontractors are required to provide site cleanup of the entire project. We invite the fire department to come out during the course of the job a couple of times to get familiar with where the fire department connections are and, and to look at what we're doing in our practices to make sure that they're in agreement with what we're doing. I don't put it just on the fire prevention division to try to enforce the codes. I think the local engine company that drives by the new construction site, you know, every day the building changes as it's being constructed. They need to know, you know where their uh, water supply connections are, uh, their stand pipes, were there any fixed systems in the building that they need to know about their access. What's the best way to access the building? We can only do so much if we're parked 300 feet away versus if we can get within 100, 100 feet of the building, 150 feet of the building. A lot of times we'll have hidden fires inside chases or inside a wall. So I always let folks know that during the construction phase, it always call the fire department, regardless how small the fire is, because you never know if it could be inside the wall or in the attic or in some hidden space you're not aware of. 
site security is critical to buildings under construction. There are many threats that can result in a fire during the off hours. The critical period is from the time, let's say, the workday and somebody's going to have to stick around there for an hour to make sure that that spark that wasn't extinguished isn't going to take the building down. Many projects are unsecured and I mean any, anybody can wander in there, carelessly start a fire. Probably the most dangerous is uh, somebody who's looking to cause damage, I would say, overnight when there's nobody here, which is part of the reason why we have two security guards that start at 5 p.m and they work till 6 a.m. and they're here 24 hours Saturday and Sunday. When you look at whether a job's successful or not, it's did the company make money, was the product delivered on time, was it delivered in a quality manner, and was it delivered safely. Working collaboratively with developers, architects, and builders to be proactive in educating them on what the reason and rationale behind uh, these codes and standards are and they'll be more inclined to not try and take shortcuts, not try and fast track their project at the detriment of losing considerable investment. Obviously we're all working towards a common goal here. It's, we're trying to create a safe working environment and we're trying to make sure that buildings aren't burning down. The building department and the fire department and the contractor all have the same ultimate goal, to complete the project in a safe manner. Safe for the employees, safe for the inspection crews, safe for the future occupants. I think our number one goal should be stop it before it starts. And so if we were able to make that our focus in terms of a program, in terms of a mentality, in terms of an attitude, I think we'll go a long way. Building contractors, building departments, and fire departments need to work together and take action to prevent fires during construction. To take your organization's prevention efforts to the next level, please go to constructionfiresafetypractices.com. This website contains training and educational materials to support your organization's fire prevention programs.